What's up, Giga Gamers? Welcome to the Strat Chat. Happy summer to everybody. With summer, that means we get to enjoy some new seasons of League of Legends, and there was no better matchup around the world than Gen G versus T1. We're going to take a look with a fast five at the pivotal moment of game one of Gen G versus T1. All right. This game and this fight broke out the entire. Uh, really set the message for how this game was going to go and i want you guys to play along and kind of start assessing critically what you think is is happening here with what's going on um we've got both teams playing for control wards in this middle bush all right so we know that people are planning around this fight for the rift herald we have a control ward here deep ward in mid uh so we know the rotations t1 has seen genji moving into this position they know they're fairly strong here you see atilia coming over <clears throat> so take a look at what comes up now you see this teleport to this ward and now the alt that goes across with the tf all right so we've built the stage for what's going on now how do you think this fight's going to go why and what are some things that each team should be looking to accomplish to make sure that their narrative is the successful one? So pause the video for a moment, take, take scope of what's going on, how would you play this, what is, gonna, what is going to happen, uh, and see if we can come up with the right conclusions. All right, so of major importance, four people being seen here. Destiny has vision on everybody, so you have perfect information what's going on. They have information on Twisted Fate. So right now, everybody is being seen on the map, including Talia, because she's ulting in on the stone. So we have vision on everybody. That's key number one. Now, something else that can happen as we're going through the fight, we're going to start looking at where do pockets of vision pop in. Now, looking at the team comps and the different items, we'd have to back up a moment again to look at the items. It's fairly early on in the game. In fact, we don't have that many completed items. Only five legendary items are built and two of them are tier stacking items. All right, so we do have an advantage on completed items over here. Uh, we also have two completed boots. We've got some tenacity, making sure that they can't be locked down. This team composition is definitely the AOE lockdown. We want to create a big fight, make this engage and hope that everything turns into this kerfuffle in a small area and just rip our damage into it. Uh, the lockdown here, <clears throat> we have some poke, but a lot of this is single target, single target damage, right? Ezreal, apart from his ultimate, we're not dealing very much AoE. Corky does deal a significant amount of AoE damage. Nidalee, all, <clears throat> almost all single target. Skarner, we're looking mostly at single target lockdown. So we're looking at pick versus team fight as a general dynamic, pick and poke, right? They want to get little chips of damage with the Ezreal, Corky, and, and Nidalee. So any fight that can start off with a big chunk of damage should favor t1 so as we get into the shape of this fight right take a look how they move forward and they say all right this is far enough the Twi the talia teleports coming in this is our window and we're going to close things off we're using destiny to get in now look at the positions that everyone takes twisted fate has yet to land talia's coming in this is almost exactly what you want but there's a little nuance that just happened a little bit different this compared to what we saw in the last frame First off, where's Twisted Fate going to land? And second, have you noticed what Gen G did? There's a fight breaking out, and this is super important. Super, super important. After this Destiny wears off, no one's going to have vision in red on this bush or in this bush. They dropped this control ward. This control ward is the most important control ward you will ever drop. The ones that you place preemptively to clear vision, those are all great. The ones that are in place for team fights are the ways that you win these fights. So let's watch how this starts off. Boom, chain CC, locked up, everyone being hit by all the elements. All right, we're getting two kills before one death. All right, and now from this point on, you should think, all right, we've got a significant HP lead, maybe we're doing okay. However, the most fed champions on their side, the ones that have completed items, uh, are the ones that are still in play here. Chovy, I, he said not on a completed item, right? Yeah, Chovy's still not quite on a completed item, but Pays is the biggest player in the game right now, apart from Chovy having level 11. So is this going to be enough to continue the fight? Well, here's the element. Because of these control wards, blue team can continue pressing forward, red team cannot, because at each moment they can use this as a kiting position, there's no more AoE spells, the cooldowns are there, this team is very largely gated on what spells they use, and the only sustained source of damage is going to be, at this point, T1 uh, Zeus on, tw on Twisted Fate. 
not nearly as much you're gonna have to wait for a cooldown from uh the q on talia which i believe she's just chucking again right now and guma just still doesn't have the item so watch how this continues owner steps back zeus goes left faker and guma are positioning right whereas this core is continuing to move together you see how they juke into the grass right here enemy team loses vision this is important twisted fate now losing vision for a moment you still think like we might be okay right they reach for a kill. But if you don't get that kill, enemy team gets to work with perfect information and that's the difference. So there are significant amounts of mechanical outplays going on here and micro decisions, but I cannot overstate how important this ward is.